You probably have heard of lactose as a sugar in milk, but did you also know that it has a very special place in the history of genetics? Its transcriptional regulation was the first to be generally understood by Jacob and Minot. Lactose is a disaccharide of galactose and glucose. Many organisms are capable of degrading it, including some humans. Other humans cannot digest it and are lactose intolerant. There are a number of microbes that are also capable of catabolizing it. The lactose metabolic pathway is very simple. It's a single step catalyzed by the enzyme beta-galactosidase, which splits lactose into glucose and galactose. These products are then metabolized by the cell using glycolysis. In this video, we'll examine the regulation of the lactose operon in Escherichia coli. An operon is a collection of genes that perform some function for the cell that can be transcribed together, but are always under the same regulatory circuit. The lactose catabolism genes form an operon, and understandably enough, it's called the LAC operon. The LAC operon is composed of three genes. LAC-Z, which encodes the beta-galactosidase enzyme, LAC-Y, lactose permease, an integral membrane protein that transports lactose across the membrane, and finally LAC-A, galactoside acetyltransferase that transfers acetyl groups from acetyl-CoA to the 6-hydroxyl of certain galactose pyranocytes. Now this gene, LAC-A, is not required in any laboratory conditions. However, in the natural world, it is thought to be important in detoxifying lactose pyranocytes that are often found in conjunction with lactose in the environment. Since these genes are involved in catabolizing lactose, it's clear that the cell is not going to want to turn these genes on unless lactose is present. In addition, glucose is a more preferred carbon source than lactose. So if glucose is present, the cell is not going to want to turn on the lactose catabolism genes irregardless of whether lactose is present. To achieve this regulation, the cell has a set of regulatory elements. First is the LAC repressor, LAC-I. The second is the operator sequence on the DNA. This is the sequence that LAC-I binds to. The LAC repressor is an example of negative regulation. This protein, when synthesized, is in an active state and can bind DNA. It will bind to its operator sequence and block transcription of the LAC messenger RNA. And of course, without messenger RNA, the cell cannot synthesize the LAC operon proteins. Okay, so let's go through what happens when no lactose is around. When lactose is not present, the only gene synthesized from the LAC operon in any kind of quantity is the LAC repressor. And remember, it's synthesized in an active state. This will bind to the operator sequence and block RNA polymerase from binding the promoter and synthesizing the rest of the messenger RNA for the LAC operon. Here's an example of what this might look like at the molecular level. When lactose is present, the depressor is still synthesized in an active state, and it may even bind to the operator. However, lactose is present in the environment, and it is converted into allolactose by beta-galactosidase. Allolactose then binds to the repressor and activates it. This causes the repressor to fall off the, of the DNA and RNA polymerase now has access to the promoter. I know what you might be thinking. Wait, allolactose? Why is that there? Why not just use lactose? The question, is, the answer is, this is biology. That's how it's evolved and that's how it works. I'm just stating the facts. 
Now, if you really think about it, you might go, hold on, wait, wait a minute, where did this allolactose come from? Beta-gal converted it. What? I thought the lactose operon was off. How can beta-gal make allolactose if the operon is off and beta-galactosidase isn't there? Well, the answer is no operon is completely on or off. The repressor does not bind 100% of the time to the operon. So there is always a little expression from the operon even when it is off. Therefore, there is a little bit of lactose permease to get lactose into the cell, and there's a little bit of beta-gal around to convert the lactose into allolactose. All right, so now we have allolactose that then binds the lac repressor and activate it. It falls off the operator, so all we're set. Let's see what happens. And you can see that there's no expression. But wait, RNA polymerase just blasted right by. Why? Remember that there are two conditions that have to be met. Number one, lactose has to be present and glucose has to be absent. In our little scenario here, glucose was present. So how does the cell communicate to the lactose operon that glucose is present? Remember, glucose is the preferred carbon source and the cell has a global regulatory circuit that turns off all of the sugar catabolic pathways if glucose is there. This is what we will call catabolite regulation. There are three players in this global control circuit. The phosphotransferase system, PTS, adenylate cyclase, and the catabolite activator protein, CAP, that I mentioned before. Now the phosphotransferase system is involved in transporting glucose into the cell and you may have heard about it when you talked about bacterial structure. One protein in the PTS system to a glucose undergoes phosphorylation during this transport of glucose. If glucose is present to a, a glucose adds phosphate to glucose and is not phosphorylated for long. However, if glucose is at a low concentration or not present, then this 2A glucose molecule remains phosphorylated. In this phosphorylated state, it binds to the second part of this regular pathway, adenylate cyclase, activating it. When activated, adenylate cyclase catalyzes the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP. This synthesis of cyclic AMP is then a signal molecule that indicates that glucose is not present in the cell. All right, the third protein in the game, CAP, binds cyclic AMP. When it does, it activates and can then bind DNA. And you guessed it, it binds to a site near the lac promoter. Now, CAP is not a repressor like the lac repressor. It is the opposite. It is an activator protein. When it binds the DNA, it will recruit RNA polymerase and capture it and help it find the LAC promoter. When it does, then RNA polymerase can grab onto it and transcription begins. Okay, let's summarize all of this with a molecular movie. Congratulations, you now understand regulation of the lac operon. Give yourself a cookie.